but Quadrill for Her Majesty is going to win well. Driven all out, doing enough for a royal win. Peacock is a royal winner of the Fairway Stakes. When you're riding for Her Majesty, it's you know, a bit more excitement. It's something that's very hard to explain, you know, but you, you get a great buzz. Everybody wants to see the Queen. Every jockey who wins a derby wants to be able to go up to the box and see her up there. She has such a great understanding of, of racing. The spotlight is on the Royal Silt. It's musical comedy and it's a double for Richard Hughes. I think any jockey to be riding for the Queen, it's an honour. Hats off to the Queen. Her Majesty has won the Oaks through the medium of number three, Don Fermanin, trained by Dick Hearn, and ridden by Willie Carson. Every jockey who puts on those silks, you know, the royal silks, riding for the, the most famous woman in the whole wide world, you feel six inches taller. And don't forget, jockeys are normally short people. <laughs> um, but you do, your, your chest comes out and you just, you feel better because you are riding in those royal colours. They're special to every jockey. And wins the oak. Obviously your first ride you always remember. I was at Sandown riding a horse for Huey Morrison and my mother was there and she um, managed to get a few pictures that I still have at home of me wearing Her Majesty's silks. It's something you don't ever forget. It's, you know, you, you grow up watching racing and the Queen's colours are, are the ones that you watch out for and um, to have that sort of special first ride is, uh, is a real milestone achievement. Obviously, I made a phone call to my mum and my nana to tell them I'm riding for Her Majesty the Queen. And actually, I wasn't worried about the ride or riding the horse, but it was like going into the paddock and it's left leg behind the right and it's ma'am, not mom. And I was like so nervous. But actually, um, when I went over to her to chat about the horses, she just, you know, like she's really interested. Sort of in the earlier days at Richard Hannon, she, she'd come in and do the yard tour and um, was lucky enough to <laughs> sit down and have a cup of tea with her. You know, it's pretty evident within uh, a few seconds of talking to her about horses that it's, uh, it's you that's uh, having a lesson and, uh, about horses and not her. Not a myth. Her Majesty knows her horses. She sees them as folds, as yearlings. She, she plans where they want to go into training. And when she comes, she, she knows what she's looking at. You can't put a wool over Her Majesty's eyes, that's for sure. She'd come a couple of times during the, during the summer. It was always a, a secret, you know what I mean? Nobody ever knew what, what was going on, but on the, on the day you knew somebody important was coming to the yard, and it was exciting for all the, for all the staff and all the, all the members, especially the ones that would have been riding our horses and that, you know, it was, um, it was really good. Uh, the Major Head would always have the la a Land Rover, and uh, of course the Land Rover was always co covered in mud. And of course, he would say to the lads, hey, lads, I think the, lad, the Land Rover needs washing. You better get that Land Rover tidied up and get the inside tidied up. And of course, they walk away and they said, Queen's coming tomorrow. <laughs> we always knew the Queen was coming because the Land Rover got washed. It's not just the racing for her. I know that Her Majesty cares so much about how the horses go on after racing. My mum, a rehomes retired racehorses and Her Majesty sends her, you know, a few each year and, and she loves to follow what they're doing next, you know, like whether they're show jumping or a field companion or eventing and um, you can just show how much she cares. She's a massive fan of racing and, uh, and I think all of the racing people are massive fans of hers. To have her around racing, uh, just brilliant.